like about cake? Everything. Cake is my favorite food. <laughs> Actually, I have a lot of things that are my favorite food, but cake is really up there. Okay, I love this recipe for Easy Sheet Cake. It's a really straightforward yellow cake with a very streamlined method, um, and then a really wonderful chocolate cream cheese frosting. I think it might become like the only sheet cake you ever want to make. So simple, and the result is extremely light and tender. We're gonna make it in a stand mixer, and it's a method called reverse creaming. So it doesn't start with that normal step where you take the butter and sugar and beat it until it's light. So we really kind of eliminate a lot of steps. Okay, so here I have a nine by 13 pan. This is a metal pan. If you're baking in glass, um, you wanna just drop the oven temperature 25 degrees because you'll get a little bit more browning around the edges in glass. Just take, you know, maybe like a half tablespoon or so. It's room temperature. And just use my fingers to smear it all around the bottom and sides. And then I'm going to flour it. So in this recipe, we ice it directly in the pan. And that's really convenient because if you're taking it to a party or you're just, you know, you need to transport it, you can just take it right in the pan in which it's baked. So, and we flour it too because the flour helps the cake to release so you can unmold it more easily. So this recipe uses all-purpose flour, so I'm gonna use just a little extra here on the side to dust the inside of the pan. So I'm just tapping around the flour to coat. All right, so everything's well coated. I'm gonna just tap out the excess. I always start with preparing my pan because I've definitely had that happen where I get to, I've mixed up a recipe and I'm ready to bake it and then I have to like take a pause and do the pan because I forgot. All right, so I'm using a stand mixer for this recipe. You could do this at home with um, a hand mixer. You'll just have to basically take a little bit longer for each step to reach that end point. So it has the paddle attachment on it. And the first thing I wanna do is mix up all of my dry ingredients plus my sugar. So again, this method is referred to as reverse creaming. So we're not starting with the butter and sugar first. We're actually gonna start with all the dry ingredients. So we have here all-purpose flour. Okay, so kosher salt, baking soda, baking powder. I found that the combination of um, powder and soda is really important when you have uh, certain acidic ingredients. And this recipe uses buttermilk. So buttermilk is a great tenderizer. I think it really contributes to a really beautiful texture. Um, so that's our leavening. Okay, so it all goes into the bowl, the mixer, plus two cups, just plain granulated sugar. I'm gonna turn this on very low just to mix all these ingredients. Make sure those are all well blended. So now I'm gonna mix my wet ingredients all together. So technically sugar in baking is a wet ingredient, um, but I added that here first, mostly just to get it all distributed. So now I have my buttermilk. Five yolks, again, it's a yellow cake, so there's a higher proportion of yolks, giving it that um, sort of nice bright color. Then two whole eggs. Okay, now I'm adding oil, just vegetable oil or any other neutral oil. And even though it's a butter-based cake, I always add a couple of tablespoons of oil to every cake recipe because it really keeps the cake extremely moist and pliable. Sometimes butter cakes have a tendency to dry out, especially if they've been sitting on the counter for a couple days. And then I have a tablespoon of vanilla extract. It'll all get mixed again in the stand mixer as well. With this reverse creaming method, the first thing we wanna do is work the butter into the flour mixture. This butter is room temperature. Now the idea here is that we're trying to coat the flour, or most of the flour, in fat. So that is gonna prevent gluten formation. This is another reason why we don't have to use cake flour in this recipe. So gluten is like what makes bread chewy. It adds can add sort of a tough texture to cake if you work the, the flour too much with, in the presence of liquid. So the first thing we're doing is adding fat to kind of like coat the flour so that when I do start adding the liquid, there's less gluten formation. It's important that the butter's room temperature, otherwise it won't work very easily into the flour. But you can just add it all at once and just hopefully prevent too much flour from spilling out of your mixer. Uh, because butter is almost entirely fat, um, there's not, I'm not really at risk of overworking it. There's no moisture in here or water that's going to like sort of activate the gluten. Um, and I want to go until the butter is worked into the mixture and the mixture kind of looks like coarse meal. Um, it'll kind of take on like a little bit of a yellow hue as well. It's funny how we use coarse meal as an indicator. It's like, what is that 
what person like knows is, yeah. like what is what meal? I don't know what I was talking about, but I, somehow somehow it makes sense. Again, if you're using a hand mixer, this step will just take a little bit longer. You can see what it looks like right there. So we need some gluten formation. You don't want zero gluten formation, otherwise there'll be no structure to the cake. So I'm gonna add my liquid now, about half of it. So at this stage, I'm just gonna mix on low and try to hydrate all the flour, and then I can add the rest. So this reverse creaming method is particularly useful for layer cake making because it is known to produce a very flat top, like it prevents sort of that doming. So when you're stacking layers, it's really useful. And in a sheet cake, you get like a very beautiful flat surface for icing. And now I can add the rest of the liquid. So this is a great method because you can measure everything directly into the mixer besides your liquid ingredients. It really is sort of a quicker method of mixing up a batter. And to me, the result is just as good, if not better, than using the traditional method. So now I just want everything to smooth out. And also, and at this point, I want to work some air into it. So I'm going to turn up the speed a bit. So you can see that the batter has already in that just in, in maybe 15 seconds, lightened quite a bit. It's much airier, and it's paled a couple shades too. So this is just working air into it. And also, I have to let it be for up to two minutes because now I, I need to develop gluten so that the cake has some structure. So this is looking great. You can see how sort of smooth and silky it looks. The batter really does gain so much volume with this method at the end. So. It really, it sort of was surprising to me the first time I tried this method, how fluffy and light the cake is. So I'm just folding it a couple times with the spatula before I put it in our prepared pan because there's still maybe some areas that haven't quite mixed in. All right now into our sheet pan. And now I love to use just a little offset to smooth the batter out and work it into the corners. I'm trying to get one fairly even layer. So for often for cakes, you'll find that the directions say preheat the oven to 350. This one is baked at 325, which helps to just, um, again, make a very even, flat surface. So it's another good trick if you're doing layers in round pans, drop the temperature 25 degrees if you're trying to get something that's like less domed. Um, so this will go for the better part of an hour. Okay, so this baked for about 55 minutes. You can see it has a beautiful, even, golden brown color. When I took it out, I tested it by just sort of tapping on the surface. It should feel firm to the touch and spring back. Um, and you can also do a cake tester right in the center. So you'll notice as the cake is baking, it'll start to look sort of matte around the edges. And then if the center is still shiny and jiggly, you have to let it go longer. So wait for that even golden brown color. You can do the sort of a touch test. And this cake is completely cool. So there's no heat on the bottom at all because if the cake is even a little bit warm, it will melt the icing. So try to be patient when it comes to letting it cool. And now I'm gonna mix up the frosting. I don't love American buttercream, which is sort of just a fancy way of saying like a icing made from just butter and powdered sugar. For me, it tends to be kind of overly sweet, but it is the advantage of an American buttercream is it's so easy to make. You really just mix the ingredients together. So I wanted to have something with the same ease, but with maybe a little better balance. So I'm adding cream cheese. I have six ounces here and a stick and a half of butter. The cream cheese adds a little bit of tang, um, which I think balances everything out nicely. So the important thing here is that the cream cheese is very room temperature and the butter is very room temperature. Because if either one of them is colder or if they're different temperatures, they won't mix together very easily. So you'll find sometimes there's like little bits of white in the butter and that's because the cream cheese was still cold. So these go into the stand mixer and I have the paddle still. So because those were very room temperature, they blended together very easily. I just wanna scrape down the sides of the bowl and then increase the speed a little bit to get some air into the mixture. Start to whip it a little bit. Okay, it is possible to overbeat this. Um, so I'm just stopping after a couple minutes. The mixture is light and fluffy. Now I have a couple of cups of confectioner sugar, powdered sugar, and I'm adding all of this at once. If I added it with the mixer going, it would turn into like a big dust cloud. 
and then my cocoa powder. So this is a chocolate frosting. I'm adding cocoa powder rather than like melted chocolate for a couple reasons. So there's no added sugar or fat in here. There's plenty of sugar and fat that I'm adding. And I need that sugar and fat in the bowl for texture. Um, so I don't really want to add additional sugar in the form of chocolate. So this is just plain cocoa powder. And you can use like a raw cocoa powder or a Dutch process, just depending on what you prefer. Something good quality. Uh, and kosher salt. Kosher salt is really important in buttercream because it really helps balance out the intense sweetness and buttery flavor. And I'm going to start on very low so that I don't like create a big cloud burst of cocoa and powdered sugar. So you can kind of pulse this just to incorporate. Okay, so now everything is incorporated and I'm going to turn on the mixer a little bit higher. At this point I'm going to whip it. Everything's well mixed now. There's no more um, like dry spots, but I want to just scrape down the sides to make sure everything is evenly incorporated and then I'm going to whip it a little bit more. You'll notice that the color will really change once we get some air into it. And I'm going to add my vanilla. I've reserved this so it gets all the dry ingredients need to work in first. So you can see this is already lightened in texture and color quite a bit. And I want to just keep going until it has like a nice fluffy frosting consistency and then not any further because it is possible to over whip it. So I'm just putting the frosting directly on the surface of the cake. Okay, so now time to ice again. The cake is completely cooled. If it were even a little bit warm, it would start to melt that butter and the frosting would kind of start to slide around. So I'm using just a small offset spatula. You could use the back of a spoon or even a butter knife. And I'd say this makes a pretty generous layer of frosting, but the cake itself is a couple inches tall. So I think it's actually a nice proportion of cake to frosting. And I'm just working it kind of first into the corners. Once it's all, once I have full coverage, and makes some nice like little swooshes and swirls. I like when you see the texture of icing. I don't want like a totally smooth surface, you know, not like a, I want to like a wedding cake. So I like, you know, you have this fluffy frosting and I like that you can see what the texture is. This is a great celebration cake because it feeds a lot of people and you don't have to deal with kind of like the stacking, the, um, filling of the layers and then the crumb coating and everything. It's really just sort of two simple operations, mixing the cake and then the icing. So I have some sprinkles here for decorating. Uh, and now I can kind of go in with my little spatula and make some nice texture in the icing. Okay, and now use any sprinkles that you want or no sprinkles. The more you want them to spread out, the higher up you can kind of sprinkle them. If you want them to be a little more concentrated in area, just hold your hand a little closer to the cake. So that's it. I really think it's the easiest possible sheet cake with frosting that you can make without it coming from a box. Um, and you know, it, it tastes like it's way more effort than it really is. So perfect celebration cake, great for like kids' birthday parties, adults' birthday parties, um, or just because you feel like baking. So you don't really need a reason. The first piece is always a little hard to get out, so to make it easier, and that's also why you flour the bottom. To make it easier, you can cut two slices, actually. It'll make it a little easier to lift out the first. So I'm, I'm going to taste it. It's really nice to have a chocolate frosting that's not overly sweet. Good balance. Not that you know that there's cream cheese in there, but it is just sort of, I think, a little bit better balance than like your classic chocolate American buttercream. And the cake is really wonderful. Beautiful, light texture, um, nice crumb, as they say in, um, in the cake world. Well, the time I made my nephew a birthday cake, he hated it for his first birthday. And I was like, more for me, 